Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now going to be going over the January 2023 International A-Level Edexcel Statistics S1 paper. Um, so I'm going to start off by doing question number one and save that in a playlist for the paper and also a playlist for the topic that it's from. And I'll do that for each of the questions uh, such that you'll end up having two playlists, one for this paper and and another set of playlists for the questions from particular topics. So um, another little point here is I'm not just a talking mark, mark scheme. I'm going to be going through the questions sometimes in a bit of detail and keeping in mind, in my mind, students who might, might not have had like proper teaching for whatever reason, homeschooling or whatever. And um, so sometimes I might go into a bit more detail that, than some of you might need okay i'm not just going to be just reading off the mark scheme i'm going to be trying to explain the uh, basics of the topic sometimes in order to benefit those students um so yeah that's basically a little bit of a um, kind of heads up for some of you guys there so let's start with question number one this is about histograms um, frequency tables standard deviation um, and linear interpolation, lots of different things in here. So here we're given this uh, histogram, which shows the time taken, or the times taken, T minutes, by each of 100 people to swim 500 meters. So this histogram represents those 100 people, and it tells you about the times taken for them to swim 500 meters. So the histogram has been um, made from this frequency table, okay, and there's some parts missing from the frequency table, um, these parts over here. All right, so we have to fill in these missing parts of the frequency table. So what we've got to make sure of is we've got to make sure of what the scale is for our frequency density so that we can then write down the frequencies easily. So now remember the frequency density, and it's always a good idea to use frequency density, the frequency density is the frequency divided by the interval. So this would be 10 divided by 5. The interval here is 5 because it's, it's the gap here. Now, before we actually decide the gap, we have to look at if there are any, you know, gaps between these groups. For example, this is from 5 to 9, and then the next one was from 10 to 14. Then you would have to extend this 0.5 ahead and this 0.5 below and this 0.5 below and so on. Okay, you can't have gaps. Here there are no gaps, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, but if this was a 10 and then there was 11 here, for example, then this would be 10.5 and then this would be from 10.5 onwards. So there would be no gaps then, all right? So here there's no gaps, so we just can str straight away just divide the frequency by the uh, gap. So it's 10 divided by five, which is two. And here we have 16 divided by, the gap here is four, so 16 divided by four is four. And 24 divided by four, which is six. Okay, so from that we can make like a scale of our frequency density. So the first bar, the frequency density is two. So this means that is one, that's two, that must be three, four, five, and six. Okay, that's as far as we need to go here. So we can just check to see, does it, did it work for our second bar? The second bar, the frequency density was four. That's correct. And the third one, it was six. That's correct. So we can confidently now write down that the frequency density of this fourth bar is five. So I'll write here five. And the frequency density of the last bar here is one. Okay, so now I can work out the frequencies for each of them because we know that the frequency is equal to the frequency density multiplied by the interval. So it's going to be 5 times 7, which is 35. This is going to be 5 times 7, which is 35. And this is 1 times, the gap here is 25 to 40 is 15. So this is 15. And to be absolutely sure that we've done the right thing, um, we should add these together and ensure that our total is the number of people in this survey, in this which is 100 people. Okay, so if we add these together, we get uh, 16 plus 24, well, that's that's going to be 40, plus 10, which is 50, 50, 85, 85 plus 15, 100. So we know that the total of the frequencies is equal to 100, which we know that is correct. So we, we can be kind of rest assured that we've done the right thing to find these two values for the frequency. All right, that's part A. Now, part B says estimate the number of people who took less than 16 minutes to swim 500 meters. So we need the table for this. All right. So 
who took less than 500 meters. So estimate. So who, who spent less than 500 meters. Okay, who, sorry, who took less than 16 minutes to swim the 500 meters. So less than 16 minutes. So basically, we've got to include all of these. Okay, so you're going to have 10 plus 16. So you're going to have 10 plus 16. Okay, so you have 10 plus 16 plus and we're going to take up to 16 minutes well that's basically a half of this so up to 16 minutes will be a half of this okay half of this would be up to 16 minutes so you can say that if you got half of this then you're going to have 12 on this side of it and 12 on that side of it that's how we estimate okay because we don't know how they're distributed but we can the best we can do is to distribute them that's halfway along half of them on this side half of them on that side so we can say plus 12 is a half of 24 all right so that should give us our answer that's 26 plus 12 that's 38 so there's 38 people who took less than 16 minutes to swim 500 meters okay so that's pretty simple for part b then it says find an estimate for of the mean time taken to swim the 500 meters so an estimate of the mean time now the mean from a frequency table we should know how to do that a lot of times in s1 they give you uh, you know some of the information you need but here they haven't so we're going to use the frequency table in order to find an estimate of the mean time okay so what I'll do is I'll take this table um, well in fact I'll leave it as it is because I'll just leave it as it is all right and what we need to do to find the mean is we need to um, find the estimate of the sum of all the times that the swimmers took the mean time to swim 500 meters the mean is going to be basically the sum of all the entries divided by the number of entries okay so the sum of all the times that those swimmers took all together divided by how many swimmers there were so we know it's going to be divided by 100 because 100 swimmers but what is it what is the times that all those swimmers took well there's 10 swimmers that took between 5 and 10 minutes we don't know exactly how long they took but somewhere between those two times right so what we do is when we're finding an estimate for the mean time, okay, we make an assumption that they, all 10 swimmers, took exactly what's halfway between these two. That's the best we can do to estimate it. We take the mid-interval value. Okay, we look for the mid-interval value. Mid-interval value. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this for now so that we can look at this without getting confused. So the mid-interval values between 5 and 10 5 plus 10 is 15 divided by 2, 7.5. That's the minute interval value. 10 plus 14, 24 divided by 2, that's 12. Okay. 14 plus 8, 32 divided by 2, that's 16. Okay, let me just um, move this out of the way as well. I don't really need these anymore. And then I have 18 plus 25. Well, that's going to be, that's 45, 53 divided by 2. Let me just... Calculate that one, 53 divided by 2. Just make sure we have 18 plus 25 divided by 2. Okay, that gives us 43, sorry, 21.5. What am I talking about? 21.5. And then 20, 40 plus 25, which is 65. So 65 divided by 2, which is going to give us 32.5. Those are the mid interval values. What's halfway between these values here? So now, for us to find an estimate of the mean, I take the frequencies and multiply by them by the mid-interval value. So you can call this basically, this is basically our x. Okay, so we want to find, the, the, the mean is going to be the sum of f times x, okay, over the sum of the frequencies. Okay, so we've got to multiply frequency times the mid-interval value. So we have 10 times 7.5 plus 16 times 12 plus 24 times 16 plus 35 times 21.5 let me make some more space here okay plus we've got 15 times 32.5 and all of this has to be divided by the number of entries that's that's this the, that, that's the sum of the frequencies so that should give us an estimate of the mean so I'll call this the, the, the estimate of the mean of the, of the time is going to be, and we'll just stick that all in my calculator. So we have, um, we'll end up with 10 times 7.5, 0.5, sorry, plus 
16 times 12, just make sure I didn't make a mistake there, plus 24 times 16, yep, yeah, plus 35 times 21.5, plus 15 times 32.5, and all of that divided by 100. Okay, so that gives us one one thousand eight hundred ninety one over one hundred, one eight nine one over one hundred, which gives you eighteen point nine one. Okay, now eighteen point nine one is um, that's in minutes. Okay, we don't really have to write the units, but it's fine if you if you do. It's perfectly fine. We can leave as eighteen point nine, or we can leave, leave as eighteen point nine one. Both of those are perfectly fine. In fact, it's better to leave it as 18.91 because it's an exact answer. It doesn't go on and on and on. You don't really have to round it because it's an exact answer. So it's best to really, really leave it as 18.91. Okay, so there's the answer to part C. So now moving on to part D. Okay, we know that the mean time was 18.91, which was found by 1,891 over 100. Okay, so it says given that the sum of ft squared equals 41,033, okay, that means the, the estimate of the sum of all the squares of those minute interval values, okay, find an estimate for the standard deviation of the times taken to swim 500 meters. So the standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the data is, and it's found by using the square root of the variance, and the variance is given by this nice little formula, mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So the standard deviation for the times is going to be given by the square root of this variance. Now the mean of the squares is basically the sum of all the squares. So here's an estimate of the sum of all the squares of the mid-interval values divided by the number of entries, which is 100, okay, um, minus the square of the mean, which is going to be basically 1891 over 100, and all of this squared, okay, the whole square of the whole mean. Okay, it's always best to use the fraction that you had when you worked out the mean um, in this formula. Although, if you use 18.91, it's fine because that's an exact value. But always get used to using the fraction that you had before you wrote down the mean. Because in most cases, you would have to round the mean. In this case, you didn't have to. So always get used to using that fraction. That's always best. So the sum of ft squared is basically what we have here, which is 41,033. So let me just write that instead of that. So that's 41,033. I'll get rid of this in case we think it's a decimal point. 41,033, and that is going to give us the standard deviation of the, looks like a 6 there. I'm trying to make it look like a sigma. Okay, it's a bit more flat like this. So that's sigma t, and so we can just put that into our calculator. So we have, this is already there, so I'll keep that in mind. The square root of the mean of the squares, which is 41,033, which is the sum of the squares, divided by 100, that's now the mean of the squares, minus the square of the mean, so I'm going to take my answer, that was in the calculator last, and square it. All of that under the square root sign, and that gives us 7.2623, 7 7.2623, 7 da, da, da. so therefore we can say the answer is um, going to be 7.263SF. Okay, that's the standard deviation, 7.26 minutes, and there we have the answer for part D. Okay, now for part E, it says, given that Q equals 23, okay, remember this was 35 and this is 15, I don't think we need it anyway. Uh, given that Q equals 23, use linear interpolation to estimate the interquartile range of the times taken to swim 500 meters. Okay, now, interquartile range. Okay, the interquartile range is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. All right, we have the upper quartile already, which is 23, so we need to find the lower quartile. So that's what we have to do to find the interquartile range. We need to find the lower quartile first, and then we can just subtract it from the upper quartile, which we're already given. So to find the lower quartile, we take the number of entries, okay, which is 100, and we divide it by 2. Okay, sorry, not 2, divide it by 4, because we're looking for the lower quartile. It's a quarter of the way up. So the lower quartile is that value for which... Um, one quarter of all the entries are less than it. Okay, so you take the number of entries and divide it by 4, okay, uh, which gives you um, 25. So we're looking for the 25th term. Okay, now, um, the 25th term 
is going to be somewhere in this group here. Now, when you have group data, you don't worry about the fact that there's 25th term, so we look for the 20, there's an even number of entries, so there's two numbers that, no. You just don't worry about that. You, you, whatever number comes up, whether it's a whole number or decimal, you just go to that value. So we're looking for where is the 25th term? In which group does the 25th term belong? Now, there's 10 terms in the first group, and the next 16 terms are in the second group. So by the time you've got by, to the end of this first group, you're on the 10th term, and then by the end of the next group, you're on the 26th term. So the 25th term is somewhere in this group, it's towards the end of this group. So we can see that this is a group which contains the 25th term, which is the lowest quart, the, the lower quartile, sorry. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take this, um, we're going to use linear interpolation. So I'm going to take this interval, and I'm going to do a bit of proportion here. So I'm going to look at the, um, this is the group from 10 to 14. Now, again, there's no gap, so I don't have to worry about extending these numbers. It's from straight 10 to 14. Okay, we're looking for Q2, Q, uh, Q1, sorry, the lower quartile. All right, now, at the beginning of this group, we're on the 10th entry. By the end of the group, we're on the 26th entry. We're looking for the 25th entry. So we want to know what is the value of the 25th entry. So what we can do is we can say Q1 is equal to 10, which is the beginning of the group, plus... Then we think about how far this is up along this group. So it's basically this distance divided by that distance, okay, which is 15 over 16. That's 15 over 16. So it's 15 over 16 times the width of the group, which is 4. And that will give us the, the value of the lower quartile. So we have 10 plus, then we have 15 over 16. And that's multiplied by the width of the group in terms of the interval, which is 4. That gives us 55 over 4, which is 13.75. 13.75 is the lower quartile. Therefore, the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, which is 23 minus 13.75. So we just do 23, take away our answer, and that gives us 9.25. 9.25 so we have answered the question we found the interquartile range is 9.25 okay now one of the things that the examiner's report mentioned here for these questions um, they mentioned that many people just found the low quartile and they left it at that not actually you know forgetting what the actual question was so always be careful not to uh, you know um, lose marks by not reading the question properly or just getting carried away and just thinking that you've answered the question without checking what the question actually was. It's asking not for the low quartile, it's asking for the interquartile range, which you have to find the low quartile in order to find. So don't forget, once you found the low quartile, that actually you've got to find the interquartile range from that. Okay, so um, yeah, that's some um, few tips there. Another tip is, as I mentioned already, the examiner's report mentions to use the exact value of your mean. Um, so don't use, for example, if you had rounded it to 18.9, which some people would, would have done and was acceptable, when you're using the value here, you must use it as the, the exact value. So it's always good to use the exact fraction that you had before you rounded the value if you rounded it. So yeah, that's the answer for that. So that, that concludes the question number one. It's quite a straightforward question um, to start off with. Um, so other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from um, this topic, which is, I'll put it under histograms and um, I guess linear interpolation, if it's, there's a, such a topic, um, averages from frequency tables. So I'll put a couple of playlists, one here and one there, where, where this would fit. And then you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link in the middle here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.